Okay, so this is a question that actually surprisingly has come up multiple times for me, especially as I work on uh, TV shows and stuff like that. And the question is, suppose I have a person or a cow or a box, it could be anything, and I want to drop it, but I want to model it falling from, from super high height, so high that it reaches terminal velocity. So the question is, how high do I have to drop this? I don't want to drop it from 10,000 feet. I want to drop it just high enough so that it reaches terminal velocity. And so how high would that be? Okay, so here's how we do that. The first thing is to consider that we do have uh, air resistance. So this is a scalar value for the air resistance on an object. So uh, rho is the density of air or the uh, whatever. This says that the air resistance is proportional to these things where V is the velocity of the object. Uh, a is the area of the object, the cross-sectional area. C is the drag coefficient. And V is the velocity. And one half is one half. That's a joke. It is one half. Um, so this is just a basic model for air drag. I mean, the interaction between this guy and or person hitting the air is actually very complicated, but this model works fairly well. So if you imagine this, right when the person starts falling, there's just the gravitational force uh, acting on the person, so the person speeds up. Then at some point over here, uh, there is, uh, the person's now moving, so there's two forces, the gravitational force and a small air drag. And so now the net force is not as much so that the person's acceleration will not be as much. But eventually, the person gets to this position where the two forces are equal. And then the net force is zero. When the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. And that's terminal velocity. So it's not too difficult to find terminal velocity. If I know all these parameters, I can find out what that is. Uh, so if I know the density of the air, uh, at terminal velocity, I know that the following is true. 1 half rho a c v squared v terminal equals mg. So I can just solve for terminal velocity. I get vt equals the square root of mg2 over rho. There's a square down there. Rho a C. So you can find that. Um, but, but if I know the velocity, can I find out how high it has to fall to get to that? And the answer is not very easily because I can't use kinematic equations because the acceleration is not constant. So I'm going to have to build a numerical model for this. Uh, so let's look at the example of a skydiver. For a skydiver, I know the terminal velocity is, let's say, uh, I think it's like 130 miles per hour. So from that, I can solve for uh, rho AC, and I can use a typical mass. So I don't really care. One, I know the the, uh, the density of air is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. I can just solve for this AC. I don't really care what they are. I just know it's a constant. Uh, so then how do I get the height? Well, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to start with the, the skydiver up here. I'm going to start with some initial conditions, uh, velocity equals zero, and this is just in one, direct, one dimension. Uh, I can calculate the net force. It would just be negative mg. I know the y is equal to h. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is make a loop. And in that loop, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the force, f net equals negative mg plus one half rho acv squared. And even though it's, the velocity might be zero, that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to use that to update the, uh, calculate the acceleration and update the velocity. So V2 equals uh, V1 plus A delta T. And then I'm going to use that to update the position, Y2 equals Y1 plus V2 delta T. And then I just keep doing this until it gets to the ground. And then I know how fast they were. Or it, even better, I keep doing this until uh, the velocity is equal to the terminal velocity. 
and then I print y. So I can actually start up here as y equals zero and fall this way. There's no ground. I'm just gonna keep falling until I reach terminal velocity. So of course, since this is a loop, I need to do this with Python and that's what I'm gonna do next. So let's jump down over here, at over, well, whatever, it's just gonna appear right here and do this in Python. Okay, here I am in Python. Uh, I've already put some stuff in there. I put the terminal velocity, I converted this to meters per second and you could change this up if you want. And this is, this is actually something that I know the terminal velocity, so I can use that to calculate the parameters in the air resistance equation, but it could be the other way. It could be that it's a sphere of a known mass and a known area, and you could calculate the terminal velocity. So you could do it either way. Uh, so that way I calculate, that's what this is, calculating that AC term right there. I just included this one thing. So now we're going to do our numerical calculation. I'm going to start with y equals zero. I'm going to start uh, with the velocity of zero. Uh, and I'm going to start with the time of zero. And then dt equals, let's put at 0 0.01, I don't really know. So now I'm going to say uh, while the velocity is greater than negative vt. Because the, the, velocity, the, the velocity is going to be moving down, right? It's going to be moving, accelerating down, so it should have a negative velocity eventually. And I'm going to do this as long as that's true. And so the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the net force. So it's just called F. F is going to be equal to negative M times G uh, plus 0.5 times rho times AC times V squared. So the, the air resistance is going to be up always in this case because my thing is moving down. So that's all I need to do. Now uh, I could calculate the acceleration if I wanted to. Um, so let's say A equals F over M just for fun. Now I can use that to update the velocity. V equals V plus A times DT. And then I can update the position. Y equals Y plus V times DT. And then update time. And then that should be it. And then let's just print um, a height, starting height equals. And let's put it as a negative number, negative y, just so it'll look cool, meters. And let's save that. And then see what happens. I don't know why it's slow. Unless I made it so that it never ends. I stopped it and I played around with stuff a little bit and I figured out what I was doing wrong. So the problem was that I was saying while the velocity was greater than negative of the terminal velocity, and that never happens. Think about this, as things go on uh, for, let's say, 100 seconds or something like that, then the acceleration gets close to zero such that it actually never reaches terminal velocity. So this thing was just going on forever. So I fix that by putting this 0.9. So I'm getting up to 0.9 times the terminal velocity. If you want to go further, you can do further, but if you want to get all the way up, there was a mosquito right there, that was weird. Uh, it's not gonna happen. Okay, so now I've done up to 0.9 and this gives me a starting height of 250 meters. And that's how you see how high you'd have to jump with a skydiver to reach 0.9, the, the speed of the terminal velocity, which is actually 48 meters per second, 754. So you'd still need to go a little bit further, quite a bit further to get there. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I wanna do the following. Let's graph this, because that this is a great thing to show a plot of. So I'm going to make a graph. T graph equals graph. Uh, the X title is going to be title equals, uh, let's do height. Yes. In meters. And then the Y title is going to be equal to uh, the velocity in meters per second. So this will be a nice thing to graph so that we can see what's happening. Uh, and then I can say F1 equals G curve color color dot blue. And then down here I'm going to plot uh, F1 dot plot. So I want to plot the negative Y because I want to plot well I guess I guess what's still it should still be Y. Let's just put it as Y. That's fine. And then the, I want the positive velocity. I want to see how fast they're going, so I'm going to say negative V. 
So let's see how that looks. Okay. So this says that uh, here I start off right here and then, no, I start off up here. I'm going this way. Can I make that bigger? There we go. So I'm starting right here and I'm and I'm falling this way. So I'm getting faster and faster and faster. And you can see terminal velocity is still quite a bit of ways away, but you can get a good plot of the uh, velocity as a function of height. But this is the, what you would use to answer the question of how high do you have to jump or drop something to reach thermal velocity and just change the parameters of the of right here and you can do it for pretty much any object. Okay, I'll give you a link to this code uh, and the, the, the section down below.